Educated people have believed the Earth to be spherical for ages. There was plenty of evidence to support this idea. When you travel north or south, you see new stars rise on the horizon, and familiar stars set behind you. If you sit on the coast and watch ships sail away, you notice that the whole of a ship disappears before the sails. And when the Earth lies between the Sun and Moon, it casts a curved shadow on the surface of the Moon. But if the Earth is a sphere, how large is it? This question was answered by the Greek scholar Eratosthenes over 2,000 years ago. Eratosthenes was born around 275 BC in the ancient city of Cyrene on the northern coast of Africa. Although located in Africa, Cyrene was a Greek settlement, so Eratosthenes is often referred to as a Greek scholar. At some point, Eratosthenes moved to Athens to continue his studies. He earned a tremendous reputation and was asked by Ptolemy III to move to Egypt, both to tutor his son and serve as a third head of the library at Alexandria. It was in Egypt that Eratosthenes measured the size of the earth, and he did so using only cleverness. Eratosthenes learned that on the summer solstice in the Egyptian city of Syene, the sun cast no shadows at noon. But this was not the case in Alexandria. There the sun cast a slight shadow at noon. From the length of the shadow, Eratosthenes concluded that Alexandria and Syene were one-fiftieth of a circle apart so he multiplied the distance between the two cities by 50 to get the circumference of the Earth. And his answer was remarkably close to the correct measurement. To measure the size of the Earth required mathematical skill. While the greatest mathematician of this time was Archimedes, many considered Eratosthenes to be the second greatest. In fact, he was considered the second best in so many subjects that he earned the nickname Beta, the second letter of the Greek alphabet. Despite coming in second, Eratosthenes made some first-rate discoveries. For example, he found a simple method for finding prime numbers. First, recall that a prime number is a positive integer that cannot be factored into two smaller integers. If a number is not prime, then we call it composite because it's composed of smaller numbers. The number one is neither prime nor composite. Euclid proved that there are an infinite number of prime numbers, and Eratosthenes devised an algorithm for finding them. We call it the sieve of Eratosthenes. First, create a list of natural numbers. Skipping one, we see the number two is prime, so circle it. Next, cross out all remaining multiples of two. The next unmarked number three is prime, so let's circle it. Next, cross out all remaining multiples of three. The next unmarked number is five, so it's prime. Circle it and cross out all remaining multiples of five. The next unmarked number is 7, so it's the next prime number. Circle it and cross out the remaining multiples of 7. You continue this process over and over. Like a mathematical sieve, this method filters out the prime numbers from the natural numbers. Eratosthenes made significant contributions in many other fields including astronomy, history, and geography. In fact, it was Eratosthenes who coined the word geography in his book, which mapped the known world. All of this while serving as steward to the greatest library of antiquity.